I did not put a nut on the outer two wires because I still have to connect the solar panels in and the power going out. Now I'm going to hook up the positive wires between all the batteries, plus to plus to plus to plus all the way across. I got two different sized nuts in case you wonder why I keep switching wrenches. I just happen to have that's what I had. Okay. Now I've got to bring over the charge controller and get that mounted on here before I can go ahead and do the rest of the wiring. So I'm going to bring it out from the uh, tiny house and bring it over here. Actually, while I'm at it. I'm sitting here thinking about how I want to mount this the, uh, charge controller. I can go ahead and plug in the inverter here next and then that'll be done and then the power in from the charge controller I'll do separately in a minute. I just have to give it some thought how I want to do that. I'm going to be mounting that up. And then I'm going to have to, going to, have to put a uh, waterproof home for it. By the way, a wrench, a box open end wrench, can be a great tool for tightening wing nuts. Now, power inverter should turn on. Yeah. That works. All right, now I gotta hook up the solar charge controller and then the solar panels, and uh, we'll have power back. Okay, I put the charge controller here that was in the tiny house. And don't worry, I'm going to build a box over this, so don't panic. Now I've got, I just ran the wires in. I haven't connected it to anything yet. I just ran them in to here. And then I'm going to hook this up, this charge controller, next. That silicone is greasy stuff. Really greasy. I'll probably put some more of that conductive grease on the outside of everything when I'm done to re-protect it because it did do its job. It did keep it from corroding all this time. So I want this one under that one because this is the charge controller and we don't want it to ever lose its connection. If I ever had to add or subtract or change anything here. So this will go like this. And then the positive goes over here. Now I'm going to do that after I put the wires in the charge controller. So I'm going to screw them in next. 
All right, I put the wires in the uh, charge controller. I'll show you that in a minute. I just wanted to not have any loose wires hanging when I put this on here, because then we're going to have a lot of power. Oh, yeah. Didn't expect that to spark. Ah. I know inverters spark good, but I didn't expect a charge controller to. And then tighten it with my wrench if I can. Make sure it's tight. Okay. Now, charge controller light is on. Now all I have to do is wire the solar panels into the charge controller and we're back in business. So just to show, I put the negative in right here where it shows the battery uh, symbol right here. I put the minus into here and the plus into here. Very simple. And tighten the screws. Very, very simple. I never use the output. The next thing will be to put the solar panels and the plus and the minus here. And that's all there is to hooking up a charge controller. There's simply plus, plus and minus on the battery and plus and minus on the um, solar panels. Always, always, always connect your batteries first or you could damage the charge controller. Always connect batteries and then solar panels. By the way, there's the green happy light showing we do have power. Okay, I ran two wires behind the inverter from the solar panels to the charge controller and I just put a green in the minus and a red in the plus and then I've got the PV's solar panels and it means it's green so it's charging. The battery is solid so it's not full. Well, that's because it's been off all day but that'll be flashing soon enough. So now I have a fraction of the power going in that I had before. I still have a lot of work to do. Two solar panels are connected right now. Just two. Now the reason was I only had two of the long wires and I was using extension cords. So now I still have a long way to go to bypass all that. And I'm going to add more charge controllers. The different kind of charge controller than what I was using before. So I'm going straight from solar panels, DC to the charge controller to the battery bank, and then run AC to the house from now on. Much, much better this way. All right, I just ran an extension cord to the inverter and flipped it on. And that runs over to the house all the way on in past all my tools. And right now I have it draped on the window and going inside. I'm going to fix that in a minute. But for now, I want to go inside and see that I got power. The modem is powering up, so yes, I do have power in here now. This, guys, is what it's all about. I just had 24 amps coming in here. That is everything right there. 23.4 amps. That's what it's all about. From two solar panels, I have about double max I was getting was 13 to 14 amps in there before so I'm hitting almost double now by moving this oh there's clouds passing over we just had some sprinkles of rain um, that right there is the most I've ever seen inside right there 14 amps on, on a sunny day so that's what it's all about guys I am getting almost double the power right there on the meter that's the, the proof is right there from just moving it outside so that the solar panels go directly to the charge controller with no long wires in between. So there you see a massive, massive difference. Here comes the uh, sun back up. Let me see. Oops. It's better to zoom. 21. See, I've never seen more than 13, 14 amps coming in here at any given time. 
that's great that's all the difference right there that's what makes the day worth it right there all right guys I've got the TriStar on here I've got my inverter running and it's kicking on right now powerful I'll show you why I've got the uh, Renogy everybody soaked up I've got 400 uh, four panels 800 watts going to the Morningstar TriStar I've got 400 watts going into the Renogy because that's all it can handle so I've got a total of 1200 watts available I'm pulling 500 watts from this one right now and 10 amps off the Renogy so 10 times 330 130 140 watts so I'm pulling in five six hundred between six and seven hundred watts of power right now and I'm in MPPT mode let me show you though what's going on inside I am mining with solar power solar panels mining rig plugged in right here you guys know this is the AC power coming from the power inverter no hidden wires, nothing secret. I've got a nasty mess of cables though to straighten up. I am mining. Uh, right now I think it was Zcash happened to be the only thing I could get running in a, in a hurry. Um, so I am mining. I am getting shares. It's not very powerful because these are GTX 1050s. Happened to be the first rig I grabbed. But I am mining right now on the power of the sun. That is really, really exciting. Now it's uh, 10 minutes to 5, 12 minutes to 5 in the afternoon, so I'll probably shut this down around 7 and let the batteries get some more juice before bedtime, before the uh, power goes, or the sun goes down. But we've got intermittent clouds and uh, relatively clear sky. So any time now that we've got sun shining, I am plugged straight into the solar power. This is the first time I've had a mining rig running since I think it was February, March time. Nothing at all has been running in this house since that period when I shut it all down. This is both, in, this is entirely running off solar power right now. That is absolutely exciting. The monitor right here, there's a monitor cable plugged into the solar power and the computer. We can trace it. Well, I don't know. I think it, I got it snagged up under something. The computer cable goes right on over and into the power supply. Right on the solar power, guys. 100% solar powered altcoin mining rig. And I am mining. I just can't tell you how exciting that is. So we've got... Um, I still have two more panels to hook up, so I need to hook up another charge controller before I can really um, turn out some power here. But I think in peak sunlight... I'll be able to run at least two rigs going on right now. Um, that's, you know, barring anything else running at this time. Because I'll have 1600 watts of solar uh, peak. That's peak available. And that's not always going to be. Well, there you go, guys. I'm going to call it a day. And I'm going to experiment with what coins I want to mine now. Um, this is on Zcash, which has no real value at this time. But I am getting shares, and it is mining for free on the power of the sun. This is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Another exciting day here at the homestead, running solar power in our off-grid tiny house, and trying to become self-sufficient and fully off the grid on a budget. Please do like, subscribe, and share, and follow our daily videos. Talk to you later.